I grew a beard. This is a divorce guy move. Grow a beard. I never had one before. Now I have one. I don't even know how to take care of it right. I go to the barber shop to get a trim. First time I went in there, I said to the, the woman that was going to do it, I said, I'd like one beard trim, please. And she looked at me and she said, it's not ready yet. <laughs> Which was so embarrassing. That's the whole reason I had gone in there. And now not only do I not know how to trim it, I don't know how to tell when it's ready to be trimmed. I thought when I looked in the mirror and wanted it shorter, that's when I could come in here and have you do that for money. But now I know there's a whole other system in place. I don't know what it is. I'm an Indiana boy. Is it like corn? Is it like knee high by the 4th of July? How do you tell with these beards? And she said, trust me, I'm a woman. Women are going to like it how it is right now. And I said, I do trust you as a woman. Thank you for your opinion. But before we make a final decision, could we just check in real quick with some of the prettier women in the shop right now? <laughs> And she goes, I just did. They all think you're a jerk, and you should go right now. <laughs> I was on a date with one woman, and we decided we were going to go back to my apartment, uh, which was very exciting. But I knew I had no protection at home, so I said we have to stop by Walgreens on the way to my place and pick up some protection. And just so you know, before we get in there, a lot of people know me there, so who knows what's going to happen. <laughs> And we're in the condom aisle. We're in the condom aisle, and I didn't know which one to pick. There's so many choices. And I asked her, like, do you have a favorite? And she said, yeah, I do. I like the ones for the really big penises. <laughs> no. I was like, okay, well, do you have a second favorite? <laughs> you know, a second favorite. And she didn't, she didn't, so it was up to me. And fellas, if any other fella is in this situation where it's put to you that you have to pick the condom you're gonna use, I think there's only one you can go with. There's only one proper choice. You have to pick the Trojan for her pleasure. Because that's the only one that says in the name that it's gonna be more pleasurable for the woman. And that way, even if your performance is poor later, at least she knows going in, your heart was in the right place. <laughs> And maybe you don't know what makes them so pleasurable. I know what makes them so pleasurable. I've experienced them. And here's what makes them so pleasurable to women. They have ribs on them. That's what women love. They love ribs. They love ridges. They can't get enough of them. That's why you see so many women turned on in potato chip aisles. They just can't get enough. They can't get enough of these ridges. It's a big thing with women. I always overhear women like just having a girl's night and I overhear what they're talking about and they're always going, never fails. They're always going, you know, penises are fine, but I just hate how smooth they are. It's a real bummer for me. I wish I could just meet a nice man with a rough penis and then I could be a happy woman. If I could meet a doctor that had a penis that felt like a corduroy, I think I'd finally settle down. I don't do a lot of political, this is the first political joke that I've ever recorded, but I'm gonna give a political joke a try right now. Thank you for the two claps in anticipation <laughs> of how controversial this Tinder joke about politics is gonna be. So I've noticed on dating apps on Tinder and Bumble, there's a lot of women that say no Republicans or no Donald Trump supporters. A lot of women saying that, but I've never seen any of them say no Democrats. So surprisingly, when it comes to doing it, Republican women are much more liberal. <laughs> I don't want to bum anyone out with divorce jokes. I know divorce is sad, but I really don't want to bum anyone out. And this, this happened after a show one time. I was, I was selling merch, and these two women were waiting until I was done selling merch. Just these two beautiful young women were waiting. And then they came and said hi to me, and they said, we love the show, uh, but we could tell that maybe you're a little sad about some of the things that have happened in your life. And we thought that the two of us could do something special for you tonight. We thought we could do something for you that's maybe never happened for you before I mean, in your life. Yeah, and that's exactly what I thought was going to happen to people <laughs> that are giggling. And I, I thought that's what they were talking about. And I'm going over in my head, like, did, what did I leave out in the hotel? Is it clean? Did I, what website did I leave up on the computer? <laughs> and then these girls say, yeah, we want to do something special for you tonight. We want to pray for you tonight. <laughs> Which is also a very nice gesture. It's a very nice gesture to pray for someone. But I, I think they could tell from my face that I was a little disappointed. <laughs> Uh, so they said, what did you think we were going to say? And I was like, um, I don't think the two of you want to hear what I thought that you were going to say. I mean, I could put it like this. I just thought that there was a chance that the two of you were the answer to a prayer that I've been saying since I was 15 years old. <laughs> 